Good morning and welcome to Travis Baptist this morning. I need to apologize for Patty for picking songs that we hadn't done in forever. And the, this first song, we, we were trying to figure out why we were having such a hard time with it. Then when she started remembering, Lynn was over here playing the, the, uh, melody. the melody through it all and she was just courting and so she was trying to, trying to figure out why it was so hard and it would just, it, it, and then we were trying to sing it in 4-4 four, four time and it's, it, it's written in 2-2. Two, two. So, I mean, we were just, it, we were having a time this morning. But, so if we stumble, keep on singing. We're here to glorify the Lord and, and he loves us through our, all of our stumbles and our, our fall downs. And so let's just uh, stand, we'll, we'll sing and we'll praise the Lord as we sing, Draw Me Close. Today's scripture reading is from Colossians 3, 1 through 4. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. 
For you, for you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Let's pray together. It is so good to know you, Lord, to know that you care about us, you know us by name, you know the hairs on our head. You know our sitting up and our lying down. You know all about us. And you embrace us. And you call us to come close. And so today, Lord, let us put aside all the fears and anxieties that may keep us from coming close. That today would be a day we just fall down before you and call you Father. And embrace you and enjoy you and open our hearts and our minds up to you. Speak to us today, Lord. Many of us are having troubles. We're needing answers. We're needing some hope. A lot of us are, are unhealthy, and we need healing from that. Some of us, Lord, are just kind of exasperated and don't know what to do. We need your leadership. We need your comfort. We need your peace. We need you to come into us and just hold us. Father, this day, as we worship you, we pray that you'll cleanse us of all our sins. We pray that you will... Uh, give us guidance and open our eyes up to all the wonderful things you're doing around us. We pray all these things in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, and you can be seated. We are glad you're here today, and uh, uh, let me see. It is May now, so that's four months down, uh, eight to go. May the 1st. And next Sunday is Mother's Day, so please be aware of that and make sure you don't wait until Friday to buy your card because you won't be able to mail it to her in time, okay? So uh, be aware, next Sunday is Mother's Day. And uh, coming up for us, we've got a few activities. Um, our Vacation Bible School is coming together. They're going to be having, if you're in the dramas, they're going to be practicing tomorrow evening at 5.30. This week will be our last week of regular Awana Club, and uh, uh, the next week, the 11th, the next Wednesday, is going to be their graduation uh, award ceremony. So keep those things in mind. So on Wednesday this week, we've got Awana at 620, and then we'll have our adult Bible study at 630. Um, also, this coming Saturday is a, a vacation Bible school work day to start helping bring some things together. It's not in your um, bulletin yet because we just settled on this Friday, but May the 15th, that is the Sunday after Mother's Day, May the 15th, uh, Corpus Christi Baptist Association is having what we call a concert of prayer where they're inviting all the churches. We're going to go over to Crossbridge over off of uh, Leopard and Buffalo and have a prayer meeting from 6 to 7 p.m., a time of prayer and worship for our city, for our churches. It's been a long two years, but um, our churches are opening back up. Most of them already have. We still got, like us, a few members running around there stray. We've got a lot of people maybe looking for answers now. We've got a lot of issues facing us as a city, as a county, as a nation. Um, just a lot going on, and we want to have a night where we bring everybody together and just pray for each other. Pray for our churches, pray for our city, and, and lift it up. So I hope you'll join us. It'll be at 6 o'clock over at Crossbridge Fellowship, which is one of our churches over there um, off Buffalo and uh, Noasis Bay and over in that area. Um, we will have directions and a map and everything in the messenger starting this week. So we would love to have you attend that with us. Want to congratulate you and praise the Lord. We raised, we hit our goal for Annie Armstrong for North American Missions and exceeded it by about $78 and some change. So praise the Lord for that. Um, keeping, yes, praise his name. Um, we're going we're gonna to do something different today. We're going to be passing the plates. So get ready, okay? Okay. Uh, for the last quite a while, we've been let, we've been setting the plates up around the room, and uh, we wanted to. Uh, we had some people want us to try going back to how we used to do it. So um, we're going to be starting that today. So be ready, okay, and uh, keep that in mind. All right. Um, also, if if you like the old way, you just drop it in the plate at the end of the service like you used to do. That'll be fine. Also, all right. So we want to remind you here with our bulletin, we've got a flap here on the front. 
If this is your first time or the first time in a long time to be with us at Travis, we would appreciate you filling this out and it tears right off. You can drop it in the offering plate when it comes by or you can hand it to me on your way out. Either way, we would appreciate it. And so with that being said, let's go around and welcome one another into the Lord's house. we make it back to our places. I gotta get my second sheet here. As we make it back to our places, we will continue standing as we sing Breathe. There's another one that we hadn't sung in a while. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread, your very word spoken to me, and I, I'm desperate for you. This is the air I breathe, your holy presence living in me. This is my daily 
daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me. And I this time the children may be excused to head on up the children's church as they head out the rest of us will sing come thou almighty king This is the time we call family prayer time where we stop and we pray. We come to church with so many things on our mind. Sometimes God is the last thing. We had so many trials and struggles and troubles last week, but now we take a few minutes and we pour all that out to him. Our relationship issues, our job issues, our education, our families, the world around us, all of these things. There's still a conflict in the Ukraine. There's still division in America. There's still sin running rampant in our streets. There's still brokenness all around us. So let's get together and pray this morning. Let's, as one body, lift it all up to Him and tell Him that we need Him so much. So we're going to bow our heads for a few moments here, all right? The altar is open if you wish to come up here and pray. So let's pray.
Our Father and our God, we love you. We're so filled with wonder at why you ever loved us. But we have learned, Lord, that because you died for us, while we were yet sinners, you didn't hesitate to make that sacrifice. We can never doubt your love for us. So many things want to pull us away from that. So many things want to shout it out and drown it out and, and make us forget. But we shall never forget. Your Spirit dwells within us and we shall never forget all that Christ has done for us. All that you have planned for us. All that you have made come to pass. And, and the plans you have for us. That where you are, we will be also. You've prepared a place for us. God, we can't wait to get there. So we're praying this morning. Forgive us and cleanse us. And remind us that the longer we serve you, the sweeter it grows. The more love we try to give you, the more you bestow. Lord, we pray this morning. Let your love flow freely in this room among these people. Let each and every one of them know how deeply you care and how we can in turn care for one another. Help us to see each other as you see us. That despite all our past and all our differences, you see us as broken and in need of a Savior. We're reminded, Lord Jesus, that time you spent healing people all day long. And at the end of it, you looked at them and you just said to yourself, they're like sheep that need a shepherd. That's us, Lord. That's us. You bless us and bless us, but still, we need you. We need your presence. We need your power. We need your peace. We need your word. We need to breathe, as we sang earlier. We need to breathe in and out you. God, your holy presence in us is such a glorious thing to realize that we can have you with us every day of the week. So, Lord, there's some here today that may not know that. Help your words speak clearly to them today that they might understand that Jesus Christ died for their sins and rose from the grave on the third day and that believing that, everything changes for us. We pray, Lord, for the conflict in the Ukraine. We pray, Lord, for both sides in that issue that you would bring peace, that you would be glorified in this conflict somehow, that your might and your power and your gospel would prevail over all of it that many souls would come to know Christ. And we pray, Lord, for our leadership in knowing what to do and following your guidance. We pray, Lord, for each individual in this city that with all the crime, all the anger, all the hate, that somehow your spirit would break through into their hearts and that the love of God would be shed fully upon them and that we would turn from our wicked ways and seek your face. And God, that you would change us into what you want us to be. That this city would truly function like the body of Christ. We ask you, Lord, have mercy on us. Send your power. Send your grace. And help us to be changed. Lord God, we pray that your mighty hand will prevail. We pray for revival in our land. We pray it all depends on how we respond to you. God, open our hearts. Open our minds. Speak to us. Help us to follow you. In the name of Christ, we say these things. Amen. There's coming a day when Christ will return. When those who know him will see that return as victory. We'll be glorifying our Lord. Those who don't will understand what the ultimate destruction is. But all shall behold him. Join with me.
for the offertory as we sing we are so blessed Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this time to come together and worship you. You are the creator of the universe and the author of all things in our life. So we understand that this world is a temporary world, that this is not our permanent home. Our permanent home is not of this world. As you have said, that your kingdom is not of this world, and you have paid the price for us to join you in that everlasting life. Knowing that this is just a temporary world, we want to extend the blessings that you've showered onto us, onto others, and we, we want to provide those blessings in these offering plates as we fill the needs of this church, fill the needs of this community, and fill the world with the joy of knowing you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen.
right, if you have your Bibles with you, would you open up to the book of Romans, chapter 8. The book of Romans, chapter 8. We kind of started this without really telling you. Uh, a couple weeks ago when we were, uh, the week before Palm Sunday, and uh, then we had Palm Sunday and Easter, and, and now we're back. So um, we're going to be kind of preaching through the Romans 8 um, and I just love this because I think it's one of my favorite chapters in the Bible. And it's kind of like you could be left on a desert island and Romans 8 would pretty much tell you everything you need to know. Um, we started a couple weeks ago where we read the first four verses and talked about how there's no condemnation to people in Christ Jesus. And how many of our issues and our depression and, and the struggles we have with the things people have said to us and called us and the, the names we've carried, that when we realize how we stand in Christ... We don't have to listen to that. Let's listen to Jesus instead and what he has said about us. And so we're going to come today and we're going to talk about how much difference the Holy Spirit really can make. And we're going to read Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8 verses 5 through 11. While you're turning there, um, be thinking today. You know, we all have conflicts on the inside. It seems like my left side's fighting against my right side. My brain's fighting with my body. What I want to do versus what needs to really happen. You know, and, and we all go through that. And Romans 8 kind of addresses this here. Romans chapter 8, verses 5 through 11. Would you stand, please, for the reading of God's Word? Yes. Romans chapter 8, verse 5. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for your words, your promises, your conditions. Teach us. Teach us to obey. Teach us to embrace these truths. And remind us that it's not about being perfect. It's about being with you. We thank you for this. And we say it all in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So here we are. We're making progress. We're trying to move forward in our life. Jesus Christ has started to make a difference, but I start to have these conflicts between what I want to do and what I know I ought to do. Now, in this passage, we talk a lot, uh, the verses we read, about flesh and spirit, or carnal and spirit. What does that mean? Sometimes we like to think of flesh as just, you know, our skin, uh, our muscle, our physical being, and to an extent that's true. But as the Bible, and especially as the writer in Romans is, is inspired by the Holy Spirit to use it, it's kind of like almost everything that's negative and sinful about us. The flesh is our sinful nature. The flesh is the baggage we drag around with us. The best flesh is all our bad attitudes and our failed dreams. The flesh is our ideas that are in conflict with the Word of God. The flesh is all of these things that drag us down and keep us from getting closer to Him. The flesh is stuff in your life. It is sinful. It is bad decisions. It is all the stuff that keeps you from being everything you know God wants you to be. We've all looked out and we've seen pro athletes, you know. Um, I remember Josh Hamilton from the, at the time he was playing on the Texas Rangers. A sure Hall of Fame candidate. And then he got off onto drugs and then he got off of drugs and wrote a novel about how he, or uh, not a novel, a biography about how he became a Christian. It was a great book. I was really praying for him. And he fell back into it again. And I don't know where he is now. We see this. We see those who have so many issues, so many things, so many struggles, 
and then they just disappear. It's like they give up. You may experience that also. That's your flesh battling against you. Telling you that the cocaine, telling you that the alcohol, telling you that the pills, telling you that the, uh, all the other things you may turn to instead of God, telling you that, yeah, this is going to help. And it's not. That's what the flesh does, though. It's the part that is tempted. It's the part that's always dragging us down. And then he mentions the Spirit. What is the Spirit? Well, in my Bible, and I hope yours too, he means the Holy Spirit because it's capitalized throughout. And that's the meaning is this. You know, you've got your flesh, your body, your own ideas, your own selfishness, and then you've got God Almighty who has moved in. The moment you believed in Jesus Christ as your Savior, He saved you. He changed you on the inside. Your sin was cleaned out and God the Holy Spirit moved in. You are indwelt by Him and He's there whether you believe that or not. Because God's Word has clearly taught us. It's one of the most wonderful truths we have is you are not in this thing alone. As you battle that old life, as you battle those desires, you're not on your own. The Holy Spirit comes in and He makes all the difference for you. So what we're going to do is walk through this a little bit and see what's going on. The flesh versus the spirit, what's happening here? On one hand, he's telling us what it's like to be led by the flesh. And on the other hand, he's telling us what it's like to be led by the spirit. To be led by the flesh, you are focusing on the here and now. You want to have a good time today. You don't think about repercussions and consequences. You want to get through it immediately. You want to enjoy it. And you never think what the future holds. You might splurge all your newfound paycheck on a good time one weekend, forgetting you got a car payment, you got rent, you got all that. But that's the flesh that says, let's go have the good time and we'll let next week be next week. That is the flesh, focusing on the here and now, focusing on the good time, focusing on what's immediate. But this Holy Spirit, when we are led by the Spirit, we are focused on what is eternal and what is above. Remember our scripture reading this morning? Set your minds on things above where Christ sits at the right hand of God. That's where your mind needs to be. We can have a good time in this life, but we've got to be responsible about it. And we can have a good time as long as our focus is above and not right now. Our priorities are eternal priorities. Our, we understand there's repercussions. We understand there's consequences. We understand that everything we do can make a difference. My simple choice to do something I thought only involves me can actually affect my whole family and the other people around me. I may think it's my business if I have moral failure, but it's not just my business. It's my family's business. It's my church's business. It's God's business. And it's going to affect all of those things. To be led by the Spirit means before I go jumping off, I've got to stop and think, what does the Lord think about this? What does He say about this? To be led by the Spirit is to keep your mind on things above. To be led by the flesh is going to result in death. To be dead by the flesh. Are you saying I'm going to get killed, Pastor? Well, I know you're going to die. All of us are at some point. But when we look at um, verse 6, for to be carnally minded, to be fleshly minded, is death. What is he saying? Number one, yes. We're all going to die. We're sinners. And the wages of sin is death. But another aspect, when I make these bad decisions, when I am too selfish, what happens? Relationships start to die. The blessings start to die off. The things that really could have helped my life, those relationships, those people, they unload me as old baggage because my choices have been too negative for them. You see, a lot of things die besides just my body. My relationship with God gets severely hindered. The more selfish I am, the more self-oriented I am, the more I am worried about here and now affects my relationship with Him on so many levels. A lot of things can die. When I give in to temptation, people's respect for me dies. When I give in to the wiles of the devil, 
the Holy Spirit's influence in my life, it starts to die a little bit. Not that he's going to go away, but because I am hindering his work. I am grieving him inside of me. To be led by the flesh, verse 6. Those who mind the things of the flesh, it says in verse 5, whose mind is focused on things of the flesh, who mind the things of the flesh, death is where it's headed. What about the spirit though? We look there in verse 6 and we see, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. In other words, if I focus my mind and my heart and my values on things that are eternal and things that are above, if I'm looking to Him for my guidance, if I, I, I love it in that song where it says, you know, my daily bread, your holy words spoken to me. Man, that keeps us going, doesn't it? That God's word coming into us. And what does it bring? It brings life and peace. The life you didn't think you could have. The life that overcomes those addictions. The life that overcomes those depressions. The life that overcomes those things that drag you down so easily. The life that overcomes all that baggage and that past and the voices. It's life and peace now. So look at those two. What do you want? You want death or do you want life and peace? For to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Set your mind on things above. Where you focus at, it brings you life and peace. The result there is so much better than the alternative. You know, so many things God lays out for are just, just no-brainers, aren't they? Do you want to go to heaven or do you want to go to hell? Well, I, I want to go to heaven. Then give your heart to Christ. You want to go to hell? You don't have to do anything. It's that simple. God is very, what's the word, um, binomial or something. I mean, it's just, you got left, you got right. You got heaven, you got hell. You got spirit, you got flesh. You got life, you got death. Amen. Which one are you going to choose? Amen. That's a decision you make. That's a step you take in that direction. Even after you've been saved, because some of us hold on to that, that flesh. Some of us hold on to that past. Some of us hold on to that selfishness. Some of us hold on to that worldliness. We hang on to it and we get so frustrated. Why, why isn't God blessing me? Because you've killed every attempt he tried to do it. But life and peace come when we focus on those things above. Is that really that hard a choice? Life and peace versus death. And then here we come. We get down to verses 7 and 8. Here's why. Here's why. Because the carnal man is, the carnal mind is enmity against God. The mind that is focused on the flesh is at enmity, meaning, meaning an enemy against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Look at this. Led by the flesh leads to this ultimate result. You cannot please God. When you focus on what's in this world, when you focus on the here and now, when you want to blow that whole paycheck instead of taking care of responsibilities, when you want to throw away a, a multi-decade relationship for a brief fling, all of these things, look, you can't please God in that mindset. God, why aren't you blessing this new thing I'm doing? Because you rejected him, you turned from him, you disobeyed him. When we follow the ways of the flesh, we're not pleasing God. Verse 7, you're an enemy with God. You're telling yourself you're not subject to the law of God. Because we think we get to go do our thing and our true colors are shown because we're saying to God, I'm going to do my thing. I'm not subject to your law. Don't tell me thou shalt or thou shalt not. I'm going to do my thing. And we find out that my thing ends in disaster. My thing ends in destruction. My thing ends in death. When we look at it this way and start to realize, on the other hand, again, the no-brainer. I belong to Jesus if I'm led to the Spirit. Look at verse 9. You are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. See, as a Christian, wrap your mind around this. You're already in the Spirit. Where's your mind at? What are you focused on? Are you focused on carnal or are you focused on Spirit? Because you've got the Spirit. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. 
This is a wonderful test of, for those of you who wonder, am I really a Christian? I hope I am. Well, here's how you know. Does the Spirit of God dwell in you? Amen. Look what he says. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. In other words, if you don't have Jesus, if you don't have the Spirit of Christ, and if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you're not one of them. You're not his. But if you do, you are his. So why are you worried about this carnally stuff? Why are you worried about the earthly and the now when you've got Christ, the Lord of glory, who's got heaven waiting for you, who's ready to bless you in this life. This is being led by the Spirit. This is realizing, you know, I don't have to choose the immediate. I don't have to do the irresponsible things. I don't have to go off. Why? Because I know I belong to Jesus. I am His. Because the mark of Him being in me is the Holy Spirit in me. It is not marked by speaking in tongues. It's not marked by any ecstatic experience. The Holy Spirit being in you is marked by the day you chose to believe. And from that moment on, you may struggle and have your doubts, but let me ask you, is the Lord ever worked in your life? Yes. That's the Holy Spirit. Amen. Has He ever opened your eyes up so you could understand the Word of God? That's the Holy Spirit. Amen. You don't understand the Bible without Him telling you. If you're sitting there going, I don't understand the Bible, I'm real confused. Would you consider the fact that you really do need Jesus Christ in your life? Amen. Because the Spirit comes with Christ and the Spirit teaches us the Word. I belong to Jesus because of the Holy Spirit. I can overcome this battle within me because I just got to get my mind focused. Going back to verse 5, for those who live setting their minds according to the flesh, and there are those, and those, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. Where's your focus? Becomes the big question for you. So now let's think for a minute, because the Holy Spirit, what this means for you. If you're saying, well, I'm, I'm still not there yet, Pastor, I don't know. Well, well, let's stop and think about, that was me, I think. Um, what's going on in, with the Holy Spirit? Number one, you have a new identity. What are we saying here? Verse 9 again. You are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. See, when Jesus Christ came into your life, you were changed. From the inside out. You're not who you used to be. So don't be who you used to be. Um, we've all gone through changes in life and realized with age, with wisdom, with, you know, okay, I had to make changes somewhere along the way. In the same way, Jesus Christ came in and takes away the appetite for some of those sins you used to think you couldn't live without. We have a new identity. Again in verse 9, you are not in the flesh but in the Spirit. And the Spirit of God dwells in you. And if you don't have the Spirit, you're not His. You belong to Christ. That's your new identity, is belonging to Jesus. Secondly, the thing the Holy Spirit reminds us of so much is your old life is dead. Verse 10, and if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. All right. What's he saying? Number one, as you're probably noticing, we sang a song earlier this morning, Come Thou Almighty King. It's a very Trinitarian song about the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I hope you noticed that as we went through the stanzas. And uh, three persons, one God. And we see Holy Spirit and Spirit of Christ used almost interchangeably in this passage. And that's not an accident. Because of the unity between the Father, Son, and the Spirit, it's amazing their closeness. It is the same thing, basically. Different persons, three persons, Father, Son, and Spirit. But here, this relationship between what Christ did on the cross and what the Holy Spirit is doing inside of you is very close, very intimate. And so look what the Holy Spirit has done in verse 10. If Christ is in you, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, He is in you. The Holy Spirit is in you. You're in Christ also. We'll let that sink in for a minute. But if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. Now, again, that word dead. 
Christ is in me. My body is obviously not dead. It doesn't work real well, but it's not dead. Not yet anyway. You may feel the same. But what he's saying here is that aspect of selfishness is dead. That aspect of the old life, it is dead. You ever find like a dead bird or a dead frog when you're a kid and you bring it inside the house because you think it's pretty cool looking and you want to show your mom? What does she tell you? Get that dead thing out of here. You just wanted her to look. She wants that thing because she knows the contaminants that come with it. She knows that there's worms in that thing or something else, you know. And in the same way, we need to look at our old life and our sinful nature like that. Let's get that dead thing out of here. There's my physical body, but he's talking about the body in terms of what we said earlier about the flesh. That part has been declared dead by God. It is interesting that in God's eyes, if you're a person without Christ, you're a dead man walking around, basically. You are dead in your sins, the Bible says. But when you come to know Jesus, you are alive in Christ, and suddenly you're not the dead man anymore. You're alive to God. Having Jesus is what makes you alive. This body, this past life is dead, so let's quit dragging it in the house and playing with it. Let's not try to scare our mom with it. Let's not try and ruin our present with it. Your body, verse 10, if Christ is in you, that, that old flesh, that is dead, but the Spirit brings life because of righteousness. In other words, your righteousness isn't anything you did. It's Jesus in you that cleaned you up and made you who you ought to be. And then we come down. The other difference the Holy Spirit makes is that your future is secure. Verse 11. But the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. All right. If the Spirit, which we've already established, He is... If the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead is in you, and He is if you're a believer in Christ, He who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal body. Whatever you think you're missing out on in this life, whatever you think that is, is dragging you down and, and you're missing out on, remember this. If Christ is in me, I'm going to see eternity with Him. The Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead. Jesus Christ, who died on that cross, who was beaten, who was nailed, who had the spear run through his side, that Jesus, whose limp, lifeless body was tossed into the tomb and a big rock over the front of it, three days later, he's out of there, fully alive. That spirit that got Jesus out of that tomb is at work in you. Stop and think for a minute. My future is not, I hope I get to go. My future is, I'm going because of Jesus. I'm going because I know Christ died for me and rose from the grave and lives in me. I know so. This is the difference the Holy Spirit makes. I can focus on that and get a whole new outlook on life. I don't have to be dragged down by the negative. I don't have to keep, you know, being inconsistent with the Lord and, and up and down and up and down in my life. Why? Look what I've got. I've got a new identity. I belong to Jesus Christ. My life, all the past, all those voices, all the stuff done to me, all the wounds that have never healed, it's dead. Quit taking it out and playing with it. Leave it outside, buried, in the yard. <coughs> and instead, embrace this new life that Jesus Christ has given you. And if you're worried where this is going, look. Remember how Jesus got raised from the dead? That same power is going to raise you up. In fact, it's here right now. In one sense, this idea of resurrection is this new life you have. Remember how we talked about the dead man walking, that without Christ, God considers us dead. But when Christ comes in, God has raised us to life. It's a mini resurrection. You right now, because of what Jesus Christ has done, the Holy Spirit living in you, have everything you need to overcome that flesh. 
You may say, but Pastor, these are habits I've had for years. These are struggles I've had for years. You don't know how bad it is. No, I don't. But he does. And he has equipped you fully to face it and overcome it. When we get to the end of this chapter 8, if you stick with us long enough, by the way, we post them on the internet every week, so you can go to Facebook, the church's page, and find the links to YouTube and everywhere else and, and, and hear these messages. When you realize what all Christ has placed in us, those habits, those struggles, that past, those wounds, he's taking care of that. You don't have to be dragged down by it anymore. You don't have to be limited by it. This is the difference the Holy Spirit makes. I am a new person in Christ. If anyone's in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. All things are made new. This is what happens when the Holy Spirit steps in. Well, how do I know I have the Holy Spirit, Pastor? Do you have Jesus? I'm going to tell you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, you get one of them, you get all of them. If you have Christ as your Savior, you have the Holy Spirit. The Bible teaches clearly you can disobey Him, you cannot listen to Him, you can grieve Him, you can shut Him up and not hear His voice. Those are all bad ideas, by the way. And that may be why you don't sense Him very much. That may be why you can't say, I'm really led by the Spirit, is because you've paid no attention to Him. And now, you're in desperate need. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Which do you want? All right? Choose and get your mind fixed on it. Open up the Word of God. This is the way God has decided to reveal Himself. Read the whole of chapter Romans chapter 8. Read it every day for a week. Read it every day for about the next six weeks while we go through this series. See if that doesn't change your perspective on some things. Open up one of the four Gospels. Read some every day. Open up one of the Old Testament books. Maybe not Leviticus or Second Chronicles with all its genealogies and stuff. But find one that speaks to your heart. Find one that tells you the stories of Christ, the stories of God's power. Open up God's word and start to hear his voice. Pray. Not just throwing it up there, but know who you're praying to. We, don't, we, we put prayer in our service not just as something to fill time, but because, man, this is not worship. Our services here are not a spectator sport. We want you participating. We want you praying. We want you reading the Word when we open the Bible up. We want you responding to God during this time. When we sing the songs, we sing those like prayers. We sing them like praises. We're saying, God, this is what I got to say about you. Amen. That's being led by the Spirit. Being led by the flesh is finding fault with everything once you get in here. Being led by the flesh is thinking about yesterday and how mad you are about it. And how you cannot put that aside because you're just going to dwell on how they did you wrong. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. Focus on the difference the Holy Spirit is making in your life. Open your heart and your mind up to that. Again, how do I get it? It starts with believing in Jesus Christ. God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We're going to sing a song in a moment. While we're singing, maybe you want to be praying, thinking, Lord, help me focus. Help me get my mind straight. Help me remember the things that are important to you. Let me be led by the Spirit this week. Let me put away my selfishness, my sin. And let me focus on you. While we're going through this week, while we're singing the song, maybe you're one of those that's saying, yeah, that's me. I really need Christ. I'm really feeling not so sure right now about where I stand with him. Right here, right now, today, that can change. In a moment, praying from your heart, asking Christ to come in. We're going to pray in a moment. You can do that. When we start singing, you can come tell me about it and we'll pray about it together. All right? But let's bow our heads for a moment. Father in heaven, 
thank you so much for cleaning us out and moving in. That we are not alone here, but your spirit in me. Your holy presence inside of this frail, sinful body. Sometimes we feel like we're such disappointments to you, Lord, but then we stop and realize you stay. You don't give up. And we will be overcomers. We will not be defeated. But in the end, because you win, we will also. So today, Lord, help each of us to set our minds on you. And help the ones here that are struggling to realize that today could be the day that they could simply say to you right now, Yes, Lord Jesus, I believe. I know I'm a sinner, but when you died on the cross, you took my punishment for my sin. You rose from the grave on the third day. And by doing that, you give me eternal life and victory over death and sin. Lord, I don't understand it all, but I know I want it. And so right now as they pray, Lord, hear their prayer. Come into their heart. For others here today, Lord, as we turn towards you, bless them greatly. Help them see your will and your ways. And we pray all these things in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. So we're going to stand and we're going to sing. If you want to come and pray about what we've talked about this morning, if you want me to pray about some other situation with you, you're invited to do that. If you're ready to take a step towards Jesus, come down here while we're singing. Talk to me and let me pray with you about that. Let's all stand as we sing. Trust and obey. Sing another stanza if you want to take a step. For you to think about what you've heard today and what you're singing right now. That you can trust Him with your life, with your future. being with us this morning. We're so glad you're here. And uh, remember, we've got uh, BBS people. You've got drama tomorrow night. And then we've got uh, on Wednesday, our last regular Awana meeting. That'll be at 620. We'll also have our prayer meeting and Bible study. Work day on Saturday, all right? Sam Moser, you come and lead us in prayer, please. Y'all pray with me, please. Father, we thank you that we can be in your house this morning to meet with your brothers and sisters and our brothers and sisters, dear Father. We thank you for this message. We ask now that you go with us and guide us and direct us this week. Watch over us and take care of us, dear Father. For we thank you in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen.